When you're starting out in shooting or, or any field sports, how do you find somewhere to shoot or ferret or hunt or work your dog or your falcon or even your trained cormorant? I'm going to talk to some of the people behind the country's biggest young shots and young field sports programs. First, Rich Kirkham, who runs Next Generation Shooting. You've just got to be cheeky to ask, you know, to literally knock on a farmer's door and say, can I rescue your crop? Um, it's what I did was a kid, when I was a kid, most of you did yourself, Charlie. Most of the messages that I get, they say, how do you get into pigeon shooting? Well, literally, one, buy an ad, obviously, you must have, you know, you've got to have a shotgun certificate. Um, be a member of BASC or GWCC, Country Alliance, or just have shooting insurance. Um, and then just go and ask the farm's permission. Um, BASC do have a good... Um, form where you get like a little booklet and you can write you can write the names of the farmers that you have permissions with um, it's a real good idea it's something that we're maybe thinking about bringing out ourselves um, where obviously if you phone phone 101 and say right I'm gonna go on this field um, some people do some people don't but if you phone the police up and say right I'm gonna go on this field if we're any gunshots I'm near a residential area blah 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 that's fine if a policeman comes and sees you, he doesn't have to actually go and bother the landowner because obviously the landowners don't want to be bothered. You could just literally say, look, he's signed that form. There you go. Um, it's just transparency. It, shooting, to me, needs a lot more transparency than transparency what it's actually got. Some of the best places to find shooting or hunting are the UK's field sports clubs, many of them established over hundreds of years. The wildfowling clubs have an enormous amount of very cheap shooting and the hunts run newcomers days usually in October. Rob Collins from Parsadon Young Sports recommends both. Many, many, many of the wildfowling clubs do, you know, I visited many of them. I mean, Gloucester wildfowlers are brilliant with their young sport days and um, different things like that, you know, and, and, you know, many of the local clubs all over the country, I've been everywhere and beagles, you know, all those sort of um, hunts, they, they love the young sports. They, you know, you, you can see them at every country show and they love it when the kids come in and pet the dogs and they do wonderful days. I'm just talking to a local one now about to arrange a, a young sport meet uh, to go actually go and help feed the hounds and do all sorts of stuff and take them for exercise and, you know, get an insight into that world as well. People are really want to help. I mean, you've got people, granddads, dads, you know, some haven't got children to pass it on to and they want to pass their knowledge and their skills on. And that's how they've really flocked to the flag of pass it on because they want to come and share what they've learned. And, you know, like we always say, when an old man dies or an old lady dies, a library dies with them. David Florence's mission is clay shooting to get kids on the long road to representing their country at the Olympics. This is exactly the question somebody said to me um, about a year ago, is when they get to sort of, I would say a little bit older than 18, I would say probably 19, 20, 21, university age. Um, they all ask me, they say, what is, um, where do we go now? There isn't really an organisation that encourages them. There's lots of organisations. You've got British Shooting's um, Olympic Pathway, you've got CPSA Registered Shoots, you've got, but there's nothing really that actually nurtures them to continue to go forward unless they find an individual coach. So that is really where um, most of them go into sort of game shooting, rough shooting, a bit of fun clay shooting. Um, there's very few that actually continue, but this is where we as an organisation and we as a sport really need to look at how we keep those people engaged in shooting. If you were in charge of British shooting, how would you keep people engaged in shooting at that age? Really, you need to you need to have a funding process because the one thing we're shooting is it's it's sensible money. If you if you want to get into shooting, you just want to shoot the odd fifty sporting or go out and shoot a few pigeons or um, rough shooting. It's fairly cheap to do, but the problem is with the Olympic side or the top side of shooting, it costs an absolute fortune to get to that top level of shooting. And there's no funding. There is funding. So British Shooting have got funding to go to the top. So the likes of Steve Scott, Amber Hill, which started in the TSC, um, they're all funded, but they've got to the top. But you've got that gap in the middle. So really it needs like a school challenge, but 21 to 25 year olds.
most of the schools challenge people they go to college or something like that afterwards generally they do a course for get for agriculture or shooting conservation something like that they make their friends within it um, and most of their friends of their parents have got farms or something like that and they encourage into like a small group and that's really the way it's been done so far so if you take you'll probably know him because you uh, will ford which is an ex tse kid uh, used to do a lot of a lot of clay shooting. Um, he went from leaving school. He went to Harper Adams. Uh, he made a load of friends, rough shooting, game shooting, and he's moved up I- I- into the world of c- game shooting from there. So game shooting, rough shooting, pigeon shooting is probably easier to get into than clay shooting. David runs the Schools Challenge, which puts around a thousand school-aged kids a year through a holidays and weekends programme of shooting events, mainly run at his family firm's shooting ground, the Oxford Gun Company. The idea of the Schools Challenge is it's under 21s and you can be completely novice, so you don't even have to have picked up a shotgun, or you can be an out-and-out pro clay shooter. So the idea is it takes people from being completely novice to being able to compete in the Olympic Games if they want to. Good heavens. How many years does that take? <sighs> to go to the Olympic Games is pretty much... Um, it's, a, it's, it's a, Unless you're Pete Wilson, which did it in four years, it's pretty much a 10-year cycle, I would say. You, generally, the, the Schools Challenge series starts in March and goes through to December. Um, most new shoot- shooters for TSC start in kind of January time. So they've got a couple of months where there's no kind of events to get themselves up to scratch. Uh, and then they go through the year and they've started, they've bought themselves a gun, they've got themselves a shotgun certificate from all over the country. We've got it as far from Cornwall to Cumbria in, near Scotland. And they travel up and they put the effort in and then their idea is to start in March and then to go through the, the series from there. And you've got events taking place mainly at the Oxford Gun Company, isn't it? Yeah, we do have, do have different events around the country. We are looking to expand it out eventually. But obviously, this was 20, 2020 was going to be our year to kind of really boost it. Um, we just had new two new car sponsors, um, but obviously that's put on hold for a little bit. Well, you do get, you do, traditionally, you give away a car, don't you? We give away two cars every year, one for the top girl of the year and one for the top boy of the year. Another one, much undersung, but probably the biggest Young Shots programme in the country is run by the government. Every year, the army trains 10,000 cadets how to shoot 2-2 rimfires, and some of them go on to take part in this shooting competition at Bisley. Rob Collins has seen his initiative grow from a handful of events based in North Somerset 10 years ago to a national organisation with branches across the country, including Northern Ireland. Well, Pass It On was a concept I came up with oh, well, was 10 years ago, actually. And it was 10 years ago you filmed with us, um, or very nearly that. So, uh, And Pass It On is, a, is basically for families that are outside of country sports. That, are, that want to get in and just don't know where to go. So we put on a series of taster days and we would volunteers, we're all volunteers. None of us make any money out of this. In fact, it cost me a fortune. It's all about getting the families and stuff in. And since then, um, in the last year, well, last four years, we've, we've actually launched a new air rifle club, which runs every week, which for the kids and the families, and they get trained and taught properly marksmanship. And only just October last year, we launched a, a live shop um rifle club in association with a local club the long Ashland district rifle club and the kids have got their own evening now and the families and they actually get taught proper marksmanship and safety but they also get to compete again in target sports and uh, we got some pretty good uh, pretty good funding coming on with uh, my company and a few other local companies and it's rolling out on a national basis now we've got um, regional directors in scotland england ireland and wales and you yourself saw me in Ireland a couple of years ago at the uh, game fair there when I was just launching my new director out there. So in the last couple of years, I've relaunched my ambassadorship program. So you've got to work hard to get onto my ambassadorship program. And once you've worked hard to get on it, they're given a lecture about how you represent me directly as well as pass it on, as well as the entire country sports. 
but also you have to work hard to stay on it and actually be an ambassador. Not You don't just get the name and stand there with your shirt and your certificate. You've got to work for it. And as it's progressed on, I mean, we try to find places for people on shoots and different things. We, we you know, we use our vast network um, to get these kids to go on and further their training. We, we've done a lot with wildfowling clubs where the young sports section have been filled um, and they, you know, done very well and they've progressed on. I mean, you know, I've got several of uh, success stories that have gone all over the world. Some of them are actually gamekeeping in different countries now. Next Generation Shooting takes a slightly different approach. Richard Kirkham runs it and he can be with you throughout your entire shooting life. It started in October um, last year, 2019. The aim of it is just to kind of influence people into getting into field sports in the right way instead of just kind of predominantly just going and pulling the trigger. Um, just to give kind of children the experiences what I had when I was younger, like going beating, um, just general kind of field craft um, and experience the real good things in in kind of our way of life. Obviously, we had different events kind of planned this year, um, like a masterclass with Ed Solomon and things like that, um, different dog training events and things, um, and hopefully visiting shows, having stands and things like that. But um, obviously, with the recent COVID-19 things, we've had to cancel them. Um, Obviously, as we're growing, was kind of we're predominantly on Instagram, Facebook, social media, um, you know, doing different lives like with yourself. But um, within a year, I want to be out more. You know, obviously, when the season comes, we've got one of our ambassadors. We've got nine ambassadors that we um, mentor and look after, um, and hopefully, one of you know we'll have some ab absolutely brilliant videos with them in, in the season because we'll be going to actually visit them with the parents and things like that on, on the shoots that they go to. So quite a lot of it is is showing kids how other kids are getting into into shooting sports is that right into field sports? Yeah that's right it's kind of using you know, it's like kind of using our ambassadors to kind of show to show how to kind of get into shooting but also you know what you know what kind of they should be doing kind of thing um, not what they should be doing, I suppose, but just the joys of other stuff. It's like Ruby, she's coming up on a grouse more to go picking up. Um, we've already organised that with the keeper. So it's just kind of taking, it's kind of in a way, it's like taking them out their little safe environment and putting them in an environment that they wouldn't have really tried before. You could arguably say there's no right way, there's no wrong way. Or well, you could say there is a wrong way of getting them in, but... Um, I'm just going through the like kind of the, the the experience that I've had as a child. Um, it totally changed my life around did the, did the sport. That's why I predominantly started the group up because I just wanted to give a bit back. As shooting as a whole, I think we have actually missed out on a generation. Um, and if we can just say one, two, three, four percent, just help people along. If you help one 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 person along, it's a ladder effect. They they'll hopefully help someone else. Um, we're only a little organisation, you know, we are trying to break eggs with a big stick. Um, we're just here to guard people or to bring people on lives like yourself, just to kind of plant the seeds into people's, people's minds and like literally watch the flowers grow. If you want to get involved in any of these groups, there are links in the description below. And Next Generation Shooting has its own grounds you can shoot over. As you know, I live in East Yorkshire. I've got three estates where they've all literally said, yeah, you can you can come. Um, in our in our, I, I, I don't like to call ourselves an organisation yet. It's more of a group. I've got around fifty six gamekeepers that are literally love what we're doing and can I can go down there under under or the person can can go down. Obviously, if it's a youngster, hopefully they can go with the mum or dad, um, and they can go down there supervise with the landowner and literally he can go through all the permission rights. Now. Deer stalker Alex Vankoff doesn't run a Young Shots programme, but he has his own problems getting permission from local landowners because he has a Russian accent and he lives in Sussex in the south of England. He explains how he gets around that. I'm not quite sure that the actual reaction caused by the accent is probably more by the fact that they probably not used to see anyone else but the local guys to ask this sort of question. I mean, the accent obviously brings a different twist to the whole situation. Um, it's, they usually ask you, come again? 
<laughs> I bet they do. It, usually when somebody knocks their door and, and they have an accent, it usually would be a delivery driver or or, or they lost. It's, it's not prejudice, it's just kind of strangeness, isn't it? So how do you make yourself more pre presentable to, to people so you can go shooting, so you can get that permission? Right, okay. Um, well, I think it's it's a pretty much the same the same advice and 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 the suggestion as to everyone else. It's always comes with the idea dress to impress, uh, clean car, be nice and polite uh, as much as you can. But uh, in reality, in the last nine years, I've been sort of semi professionally stalking in UK uh, and wildlife management. It's um, it comes as a sort of a uh, second nature really you, you you need to become more professional on your qualifications rather than rather than just try to be lucky and knock the doors unfortunately the land is pretty much grabbed all around the country and um, the only way when you introduce yourself and uh, if you have a chance to get to the second stage when you actually start chatting to the landowner about what you offer or what you're asking for then you have a better uh, opportunity to get that permission if you have something to prove that you are serious about what you do. So you need to show a farmer your Basque Young Shots membership or your Boy Scout shooting badge. Along with Browning Shotguns, Basque supports shooting sports in the Scouts movement shown here. And Basque's own Young Shots programme runs a series of activity days around the countryside and is a great club for Young Shots to get to know the sport and each other. It also runs initiatives in schools. And it is up to these organisations to welcome you in. The British Falconry Club once rather pompously turned down a 14-year-old field sports enthusiast called Chris Packham. And look what happened to him. Alex is enthusiastic about these programmes. I think the best, the best thing I've done so far uh, in terms of involving young guys, and uh, young generation, is that uh, I've been asked in a local uh, Boy Scouts group to come over and show them the skinning, garlic and, and butchery of, of various animals. Um, and uh, obviously that was over 16. And um, that was probably what I did with the youngsters. Uh, but also I do my bit with BDS and Basque occasionally when I can, you know, promote our sport, our hobbies and um, obviously helping out like myself, people who came from Europe, a couple of my friends, to get into the actual uh, stalking, sharing my land with them, you know, helping them out with the choosing a weapon and so on. If you want to get into shooting or any field sports, there is plenty to get your teeth into in the UK. And unless you have access to it through friends or family, these organisations really are the best way. As well as what they give you in terms of friendships and training, they're there to show you're safe with a gun or a horse or a dog or a falcon or even a trained cormorant. Now, Field Sports Britain is at 7 p.m. UK time next Wednesday. I will see you there. If you are one of our happy band of backers, the Field Sports Nation, I'll see you with my vlog on Tuesday. And if you want to know how to join the Field Sports Nation, go to the link on the screen. See you next week.